Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to Adventure All The Way. I'm Emma and I'm a mum of three from the UK. And today's video, we're just gonna talk about the importance of nature study. Um, we're gonna get right into it. I did film a little bit whilst we were on a walk because I thought, what better place to film a video about nature study than out in nature? And the video went something like this. Hello, I'm Emma. <laughs> and and so on um, and all of the footage started with me going sorry about that and then it ended with me going yes because they just wanted to talk to me and they wanted to show me nature and I realized hang on I shouldn't be talking to you people I should be talking to them uh, but I was having what I've had one of those days where loads of different things have gone wrong and I was like I just wanna <laughs> and we all get those days and I've definitely had one today we haven't really done any home ed today because I've had a headache all day and water and paracetamol have not shifted it um it's really annoying it's hormonal headache so it's just annoying and yeah so let's talk about nature study less about me more about nature study now we've been talking um about Charlotte, Charlotte Mason a lot at home is something that uh, Phil's grandma was really passionate about uh, she was really passionate about Charlotte Mason's style of teaching and um, it's something that I've always been interested in and we've started to implement more of her principles to our everyday life without the Christian bit um and there's lots of things that Charlotte Mason says about um the reasons why nature study is good a few of them are a bit christiany but i'm not going to go into those because that's not my cup of tea and it might not be yours it might be yours might not be yours but this is not a christian channel so you're not going to find me talking about that here um so number one uh nature study it gives a really solid foundation for sciences and i mean formal sciences like biology si 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 <laughs> i'm not entirely sure what happened there physics and chemistry um I feel like it can it helps children connect A to B and connect the dots between one thing and another to understand cause and effect to understand even like the beginnings of like Newton's law and stuff stuff like that um like Newton's laws because you're just learning that everything in nature there's a reason for it and then there's another thing that's coming along because of it and all of that sort of thing so um i'm really not articulate today am i i'm not entirely sure i think i just need a bath and a cup of tea uh but we'll see um <laughs> it may be wine who knows um yeah so it's a solid foundation base it it gives them those beginning scientific skills which then will take them on to learning more formal sciences so i'm not saying if you don't do nature study with your kids if you get an ME, like an MEL science box, they're gonna be like, oh, I don't know what to do. They're not gonna be like that at all, but it's just gonna give them maybe a leg up, I think. It certainly has given my kids a leg up. We've done nature study on and off since they were really small, and they've actually got really inquiring minds, which brings me on to point number two, which is it encourages that natural curiosity, that natural inquisitiveness that children has, has, have, that natural inquisitiveness that children have um, when they go out and maybe you will ask an open-ended question about nature or maybe they'll ask you a question about nature they'll just see something and their natural curiosity will go click and there's questions you know when they get on a roll of questions especially young children I'm talking like seven and under and they just go and then what happens but why but then and then what happens and then why does that happen and then you're like whoa I'm running out that it, that's really really good for their brains and it's it's even though it can be really frustrating sometimes as the parent you want to go with it as much as you can because they're just like you know they're just their brains are just going a mile a minute seeping in all of that information that they want to get from you and i really think that encouraging a curious nature encouraging an investigative mind is a really really good skill to have for children but also for adults to have that curiosity and that investigative mind nurtured um all the way through adulthood because um i think i always had a very healthy curiosity with nature which was encouraged um and actually now if jessica fletcher came in and said we need to so solve a murder i'd be your girl so i mean maybe um Maybe we just get Hercule promo to do it, I don't know. Anyway, which brings me on to number three. Um, cr it creates children who are climate and environment focused, climate and, and 
in my gosh, I can't talk. Climate and environment focused. Singing always makes it happen. Um, yeah, my kids are really, really interested in climate change. They're also really interested in the environment. Um, trying to teach them that littering outside, they understand that littering outside is not okay. And they are very passionate about people littering. When they see people littering, they will holler at them across the street. Bessie has done it from inside a moving car. We were driving down the high street. She watched someone finish their cigarette and drop it on the floor. And she went, she wound down her window. What are we in the nineties? She w pressed the button, her window went down and she went, Oi, pick that up, you're littering. And she was about five something oi at a grown man out of the window and i you know maybe other parents would have told her she was being rude but i just was like yeah yeah uh like a like an mp in the house of commons yeah 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 yes i totally agree with you disgusting put it in a bin um yes so bessie's very passionate about the environment however i am trying to teach them that also dropping a rubbish on our floor in our house is polluting our environment but they're not buying it um for some reason but it creates it i feel like for my family it's created children who are climate change climate crisis focused in that they are they are more likely to understand the climate crisis that we're in uh, the comments are not a place to like disagree with me on that because that's just not gonna help um and um environmentally focused so they will i mean my children this is a bit satirical today i think this 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 video so just bear with me um it's you know it may make i hope it won't make your child holler at people who litter in public um but it certainly has made my children do that and when we go out if they see a dog poo that is not obviously that doesn't belong to our dog because we pick up a dog's poo but um they want me to pick it up and i have run out of poo bags on a walk before because we've picked up other people's dog poo um because they've been like mummy um and we picked up other people's litter. We picked up someone else's litter after they dropped it. We've watched them drop it and then we've picked it up and we've been like, we picked that up for you. <laughs> a slightly passive aggressive, I know, but it's really, really annoying when people litter, isn't it? And I think that it's something like they've gone, mummy, um, we don't want to you, if they see me wearing a disposable mask, mummy, we don't want you to wear a disposable mask because, and then they, because they'd seen a picture on the internet of a turtle having a, disposable mask caught around its face um and they were like no mommy you should use your reusable ones don't use a disposable one which is really annoying because when you go into hospitals um at the moment there's certain places where they're like can you take off your reusable mask right here in the foyer with all these people and put on a disposable mask and then you touched all of these things that other people have touched and then just... i don't get it but anyway um point number four is it gets you out in the fresh air and I feel like that's really important. I know that I put on a bit of weight over Christmas and the new year when I was eating too many takeaways because I didn't have time to cook while I was looking after my grandmother. And um, this year I kind of became a bit, a bit heavier than I've ever been, unless I've been pregnant. And I've not been okay with that because I've really felt like my health has suffered because of it. Um, I've just been really unfit and I've been feeling really unhealthy because of it. It's just not like me at all. This is Madison, by the way, if you haven't met Madison before. Madison, say hi. Say hi to my friend. I'd rather lick the tail, she says. Um, so yes, I've not felt my greatest and by going out on nature study, by making us go out on nature study, we don't take the car. We walk to our local woods where there's a duck pond and then there's some lovely wooded areas. There's also a meadow and with a stream. So we go, we walk there, we walk around there. It probably takes us about an hour of walking round it just because that's what we want to do. Um, and then we're also doing loads of educational stuff. As we go around, we're talking about stuff. There's signs in our local woods where we go around. Um, and actually it's great exercise for me, it's great exercise for the children, it's screen free activity that is also free and it's really really good. I've certainly felt a lot better and a lot healthier and like, like my fitness is coming back um, since I've been, we've been doing nature study walks more often. Um, so we are going to make sure that we're doing them weekly, potentially even daily if we can fit it in, like at least like aiming for that in the afternoon. Um, because it's just the health benefits that we felt are really, really important for me to keep going for myself and for the children. Um, so, and finally, point number five, 
it creates a space for child-led learning now i do struggle a little bit with creating child-led learning or rather allowing facilitating it allowing there to be a space for it um my dog's being weird um and that's because i think still even after five years of home educating because my children have never been to school i still am not completely de-schooled i still have well you should do this you should be doing this they should be doing it this at this pace i still have that in my brain it still niggles away at me from my experiences when i was at school but also from other adults who um, either believe solely in the school system or who are not um, de-schools themselves in any way shape or form just kind of those niggling doubts that sometimes things that people say can place in your mind and I think that I really struggle with that sometimes but when we're out on a nature study it kind of blows all of those cobwebs away and I feel way more confident in my choices I realized that I am raising three very environmentally conscious kind and caring individuals who love being out in nature and that's a really important thing for me like that's you know when I don't know if anyone ever kind of was like this is what I hope for my children and these are the kind of adults I want to be all I want for them to be I don't care what job they have as long as they're happy like for me it was really important that I raised young people I raised my children into young adults who cared about the planet um as pagans that's really important to me i don't care if they don't follow the um the you know the spiritual side of it but i feel like loving the planet and taking care of the planet is really really important um and that's what i wanted to instill in them and for them to continue to be passionate about it through into their adulthood to teach their children if they have any and in the hope that they will affect change um at least help to affect change and their children will help to affect change and so on and so forth um, and I definitely feel like that has happened but when they are in a space like the woods and it's and they are learning by themselves and I'm just facilitating that by I've taken you to the woods um they'll use gross motor skills because they climb trees they jump on logs they jump in the stream they jump out they climb out of the stream they will use their fine motor skills because they pick up sticks they pick up acorns they pick up leaves they might use the mud to they might use a stick and the mud to create marks um or to try and draw pictures they will um practice their social skills even because we always meet someone in the woods and we always say hello to them and greet them and good afternoon good morning good afternoon and they're, they're quite often have a conversation like you know we usually get the oh not at school today oh no we are at school today we're home educated we're at school right now um it's quite often what charles says and um we don't we're on a nature walk that's what we're doing today and that sort of thing um but um and again that's child-led learning it's not less necessarily educational like national curriculum educational but it is life skills and that is way more important than potentially you know learning algebra or something like that um especially for my children I feel like life skills are really really important because um they are going to struggle they are going to struggle with different things to a neurotypical child and I need to create an education that's focused on them and their needs as they evolve as well as their future needs um as as and when they become adults and uh, you know want to go off in the wide world without me um so yes see you on friday and the next time you'll see me i will be 31 bye